with Guy Gerber at Le Studio by Fanny and Annie, and we couldn't resist dipping into the dress up box. Guy, you look fabulous. Who are you wearing? I'm wearing um, this very contemporary uh, artist, um, what's his name? Jean Valjean. Oh, Jean Valjean. I know him well. I know him well. Yeah, um, really pops your eyes. Yes. Nice. Uh, so, there's so many Can parties. <laughs> ah, hey, hello. <laughs> There's tea Fanny tea? of Le Studio here. Uh, I would like some tea, please. Okay. Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, <One> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many parties and people on this island uh, trying, to, trying to make money. Why is, it, um, why is it good and important to just throw a free party? Um, first, I think that, you know, Ibiza, you know, is big part of my heart belongs to Ibiza and it's a resource that a lot of people here are living from but they take advantage of it and they just try to you know get as much as they can out of it and the main 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 concept for me behind this party was that a year before I was working in Pacha and I did Wisdom of the Glove which was great but when you sell tickets, there is first a lot of pressure and also there's a lot of political situation between all the people here in Ibiza. So you can have this guy, you can have that, that guy. And since I'm not a promoter, I'm more of, of an artist, so it was so much pressure to try to book people and to try to do this and to try to do that, send email to people. And it's not my thing, so I said, why won't I just out concept myself with this wisdom of the glove and come up with a concept that require less work in a way and also in a way kind of like put a mirror to what's going on on the island because I think there is so many parties with huge lineups huge billboards thousands of people everything is big like 500 DJ playing in the same room and it's like the set times and everything and my party has no lineups no set and absolutely zero zero information and it was in a way bold but I also wanted to you know to just to do something that is more for the people because I think um, we also don't promote it at all obviously I'm sitting here right now but it's just already the second yeah, here it's just a chat. Yeah, you know no but it's like basically there's no billboard there's no I don't know there's not so much like there's no flyers there's no nothing and I think by that people have to tell the their friends about the party and when they do this they become part of the party because they are actually promoting the party and do you think the fact that you know you say you do very very minimal marketing is it important to you to maybe like maintain a little bit of mystery in this kind of age of social media yes ex exactly because there's there's so much so much information kind of flying around and another thing which i think is one of the biggest problem of um, think life in general that people promoting you either is themselves or something else and I think today artists if you go on the artist pages 80% of the posts are either like a funny photo of something of somebody or like a funny video it's to get you know to get more likes um, and I think the artist role is to challenge society and to, I don't know, make people ask questions rather than just like giving them exactly what they want. Yeah. It's a relaxed environment, you're not forced to dance, but if you want, you know, you can dance. And it's just like, I think it's more of a party than a rave. And that's what I was trying. And also the reason that we're here, a big part of the party is like, let's say, funny, that helped me. Also, my friend Paolo, she does the decoration. Champagne better than Tina. Oh, great. Thanks, Fanny. Thank you. <laughs> Salut. Hello. Um, but yeah, you, but it's like, you know what? I like also the, the challenge of, like, let's say, doing something. And let's say sometimes the challenge is how to bring people. Now I think the challenge is how to keep the magic when there are so many people. Mm. And. And yeah, so that's why we are <laughs> <laughs> we have we have a lot of weapons, you know. You're infamously into awkward moments, right? Yes. So very good. Yeah. So can you recall any perhaps 
like truly awkward moments from your professional or social life that like maybe even got a bit weird for you? Um, I mean, I feel like very awkward inside. That's why I usually try to make it awkward for everyone. <laughs> so I feel more calm. Okay. <laughs> but yes, I have lots of lots of awkward moments. But I would, let's say I was at the beach and it was a, the water was a bit cold. So, so I was there and I was just by myself just by myself and I see this girl coming into the water but it's like I, I usually use the seeing glasses so I didn't see that well but I could see you know she's wearing a bikini so I was like I was trying to figure is she hot she's not hot and she's just walking at one point just it's only me in the water so she's walking towards me so at one point I'm like okay <laughs> and she gets closer because I'm really trying to figure out how she looks like I'm constantly watching her so she thinks that there is like some this eye contact and by the time I could see I could see yes, she had a really fit body mm -hmm. but she was 60 something we One call them the prawns yeah <laughs> but at this point I was like already like literally looking at her for a while so she was like walking and then she said something like how is the water and there was like this like um, seaweed so I didn't know what to say so I said after the seaweed, she was like, what? I said, after, which means, I don't know what, after, and she was like, and now she got really close to me, came away, splashed into us, I bumped into her, <laughs> and her bra fell. And I was like, oh my God. And, like, and this is like basically only two people in the middle of the water. So if you see this from the side, it's like, what, huh, hey? And I managed to be a really awkward moment, but yes, I have this like, at least twice, twice a day. Why do you think it's so uh, popular at the moment for DJs and producers to want to be owning labels, starting parties? Does it never, does the business side not distract from the creativity? First, um, I look at it more, it's like sometimes when I do it, I feel like I take responsibility and there's like some things that I like and maybe they're not there and I try to make sure that they will be there. Intellectually, it's more interesting when it's something that is yours. Mm. Um, it makes it more interesting, especially when, um, I don't know, I, I always look at it like that. So when it's yours, even if it fails, at least, you know, it fails because of you and it's your responsibility and it's also nice to do something obviously for yourself, but something that um, uh, ready to, to go to summer play, you know, you just like maybe in a way like a soldier, you know, you go from a place to another, but in that places when it's yours, you make sure your friends play, it's an environment that you like. Obviously, it takes, it takes, um, it takes a bit of attention out of the studio, it takes a bit of attention um, out of other things, um, worth it. It it w yeah, it's worth it, and I think in a way, when you're someone like me that I overthink all the time, it just gives me a lot of things to think of, and in the w in the end, I get less stress because if I would put all this overthinking on one thing, I would be it would be more stressful for me. Like this, there is so many things to think of, so it in a way it's kind of like calm me down. You say you're always thinking of so many things. Does that change when you're playing, when you're DJing? Are you more mm. sort of focused and singular? Or When I play, it's usually... <laughs> First, I always improvise and I do not... Um, hello. Uh, yes, a little oh. bit more. Oh. Thank you. I think I'm okay. <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> That's a lovely um. outfit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see? I really, really, really concentrate, which is like make it something look maybe, maybe I've been a little bit sad or angry, but I'm really concentrate and I really, because I don't prepare and I like this intensity that I have no idea what's going to happen and I like this challenge that I start with absolutely nothing and, it's, and, 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 and then I do think about a lot of things. There was this person behind you, there's this thing over there, what happened before and it's like really like an effort to try to move all these things around. Mm -hmm. Especially when sometimes when you start, you put the first track, already everybody goes like, great, second track, okay, you got them, he's smiling. But sometimes you put the first one and the sound system, you know, is not that great. So when you open the kick, it doesn't sound like as much as you expected it. Or so then you're like, okay, and then you have to react. You put the second track, 
it also doesn't work. Now you start to feel maybe a bit insecure. What should I do? And then it's really like an effort. But I, I like this thing. How would like, no, no, be here, only here, only here. And at one point, yeah, I clear everything and I just, you know, I try to be only in that place. Um, but I, this, this intensity, I think, goes to the crowd. Rather than, obviously, you can work on your set in advance, know exactly what track you're playing, know which track works with the other, and just play hits. Obviously, it's easier. But I think people go home with less of an experience. It's mm -hmm. just they get like served a menu. Uh, it's like a set menu. Rather, it's you know more interesting. There's more place for awkwardness when I <laughs> not preparing. There's some people with hats taking photos of us. <laughs> <laughs> <That's Nah. serious. laughs> what what makes a good musical collaboration? Is it best when everything just flows really smoothly, or can a bit of conflict? sometimes push you forward? Hmm. I think the best bands in the world were best because of the conflicts and also me in a way that said the Beatles I think were so good because of the ego fights between mm -hmm. John Lennon and Paul McCartney. But I think when you do a musical collaboration, because um, it's obviously it's not a band, it's better when there is no conflicts because cause you meet people person for only for a few days and when there's to be conflict it, in the end it's more about uh, compromise because mm. you don't have so much time it's not like your band member it doesn't push you further uh, it's nice when two artists meet and they don't work together and it's just like flow and magic happens I think okay. it's better when it's like that okay so just to finish um, in in the name of your newly returned beach party I've got a few rumors if you could confirm or deny them about yourself stuff that we've uh, read online or heard on the street or whatever so uh, you once stayed up for four days in a row making music and then deleted it all just before going to bed I don't delete I do stay awake I did stay awake um, for four days twice in a row once in a while like it was in the same week that I because I enjoy I don't delete but I release probably 5% of the music that I make because later I just, sometimes I don't like it. That's a tiny percentage. Yes, I know, I know, but it's like, that's like, as, as an artist, I'm constantly frustrated because I never, you know, as heavy it and this and that and sometimes it's better just to start something new yeah. than to keep on like trying to get to reach that moment that maybe was lost. Um, the jewel encrusted wisdom of the glove glove that was displayed in Pasha is now erected in your bathroom and holds your shower cap. No, it was stolen and I remind you the price was $150,000 of that glove. $150,000 stolen. The hard $50,000 it was stolen. Do yeah. you have any leads? Uh, I think it's like some guy that I fired <laughs> and he wanted revenge <laughs> and he had access. Uh, okay, so you have um, a pet caterpillar that you carry in your pocket and sometimes you guys time travel together. Um, yes, but only 20 minutes ahead. Okay. We do time travel. Yes. And lastly, you have a third nipple and his name is Dave. Hmm. Let's have a look. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're released. I've got okay, all I great. need from you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, <laughs> thank um, you. Thank you. Cheers. <coughs> Cheers to America. Why? <laughs> <laughs>